Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a project update video for this 1-6 scale radio-controlled ArmorTech King Tiger Heavy Tank. Since the last video update, progress has been made to the vehicle's hull bodywork as well as the engine compartment cooling system. We'll be going over all of these additions and details in this video. Now a couple videos ago when I was talking about the engine compartment, I also briefly touched upon the King Tiger's cooling system. In that video, I mentioned that I was designing in CAD a new detail set that supplies you with all of the necessary detailing for this set of components. Well, with a bit of time later, here we have the first samples of those production units, and I'm going to go ahead and bring the camera in closer because there's a lot of cool stuff here that we're going to talk about. Before I do, though, I just want to mention that these sets here are currently listed on the EastCoastArmory.com product line. They are all comprised of 3D printed components. Now, unlike the older Tiger One cooling system that I developed a number of years ago, where that set utilizes cast resin parts, for these sets here, that's not the case. Another thing I want to point out, that this is really half of the system. The other half consists of the cooling ductwork, which is currently in print as we speak, and once those systems come in, I'll be able to wrap up the entire system. But this here gives you a good idea on what the kit supplies you with. Now, currently, this kit is available for sale on the ECA product line, and it contains the static version of the ductwork, which is more common on the Yag Tiger, but was also used on King Tigers as well. There is another set that is currently in the final stages of pre-production, and once those units are in hand, I'll be able to take more pictures and video of those units, so you get to see the whole unit in person. But before we do, let me go ahead and bring the camera in so you get, get a good idea on what this new set here is going to feature. The first bit of equipment that we're going to showcase are the radiators. Now, the King Tiger utilizes four radiators in total. This is similar in design to what was seen on the Panther, but it's definitely a evolution from what was seen on the earlier Tiger One. On that vehicle, the vehicle had two very large radiators found on either end of the engine compartment. While on the King Tiger, they shrank down the size of the radiators, but they made up for the surface area loss by just giving you more of them. Again, the same system was also utilized on the Panther as well. Now, here we have the unit. Note the detailing found on the cell portion of the radiator fins. This is also true on the opposite side. Here we have the side where we have the plumbing work. Now these radiators are in a left and right hand specific type format. And on the real units it would actually be one radiator that you would remove this cover cap on this side here and that's how you would be able to transition between left and right. Note on the top portion we have all of the detailing found with these stamps, these stamped in channels as well as these two filler plugs. That detailing is also present, but I'll go over that in a second. Note the plumbing detailing found on the bottom portion. And again, this is also true, but be it a mirror image for the other radiator box. From the radiators, this now brings us to the main fan housing. Now, this was a very interesting piece to design. The fan housing does a lot of functions compared to what was seen on the Tiger 1. Where on the Tiger 1, we had the fan cluster, and it did have several offshoots that go into the engine compartment to, again, aid with cooling of several systems all at one time. Well, the same idea was also kept with the King Tiger and the Panther family. Here we have this large thick piece found on this side here. This is actually a gasket and on the model here it's actually a separate piece of tooling. In fact all of the supplied components are found on this piece here and it's basically just one encased runner. With a pair of clean snips you go ahead and snip off all of these ascending pieces of detailing which is a, all the parts that you need to really assemble the unit together as well as assemble the unit with its radiators connected. 
Well, from the gasket, you can see the axis cap on this side here. And these other holes here are for the other bits of equipment and duct work which is going to be needed for the King Tiger. Now, just like with the radiators, these units here are left and right hand specific. What the difference is, is with, well, this axis hatch that we have here. You notice on this version here, this plate here, it seals off this section. Now, obviously on the real King Tiger, these units here would be the same system, which again is a way for the for the Germans to cut down on the amount of parts required. If you have a left and a right hand system, it kind of bogs down your supply line and production line. So by having a single unit that is reversible by just moving a small little plate, this definitely helps with alleviating this issue. But again, the detailing is identical on both of the units. On the bottom here, note we have this stamped descending cone type design. The, this here is as per the real unit, as are these other cutouts here that are found on the bottom portion of the cooling housing. On this side here, there's nothing really to talk about, but this now brings us to the top. Here we have the support braces. Now these are actually how the radiators would be fastened on the real vehicle. It's done via these row of fasteners. Now on the model here, the fasteners are pre-printed onto the set here, which cuts down on the, on the parts required for assembly, as well as it gives you the correct detailing that is required and also makes it easier to build. And here we have the cutout for the fan. On the inside, we also have some interior detailing as well. This large, column that we have here which is connected to the floor is for the drive shaft which would emerge from the engine enter into this section over here and once it's assembled this drive shaft opening is actually going to be lining up one of these holes and that on the real vehicle is how the fans are propelled now this here is a detail face plate for the center portion of the fan which i'll show in a second now, if you notice, this current, again, this bottom plate here is not integrally printed to the housing. It's actually a removable part, which I'll go over in order. Now, for the fans themselves, just like with the Tiger One cooling system that I developed a number of years ago, the King Tiger set utilizes PC cooling fans. These are DC driven and are 12 volt powered. So, patching them into the remainder of the tank's electronics is pretty easy. They give you some fantastic detailing, and having the functional aspect of them gives you a nice balance between the two. And just like with the Tiger 1 set, with having these fans, they give you a lot of nice detailing that is visible through the grill work, but having the ability to have them fully functional also gives your model a nice little detail edge compared to just having the compartment either totally empty or with just some bogus fake fan work. These tubes are the interconnecting tubes for the radiators that once assembled, you'll see how they interact with each other on the bottom portion here of the fan housing. And the last runner that we have is this set that we have here. If I could get it in focus, this runner here comprises of the other tubes which are connected on the top portion here of the radiator. Like I said before, there are these two small holes, and these holes are for these valves and and cutoffs that we have on this runner. On the valves you have the little tube connecting sections that have their little hose clamps detailing integrally printed on. Notice that these are printed in HD specifically to bring out this nice detail that we have here. Once the units are fully assembled you'll see exactly how all of these parts here interact with each other. And here are the housings now fully assembled and ready for painting. Now, currently the radiators as well as the gasket are just placed on in a temporary manner. You see everything just pops off. And this is done in order to get the pieces thoroughly painted. But here you can see exactly how the pieces look. Now, the assembly went together very well. There are a couple little areas where I'm going to make some tweaks to for the final production units, but by and large, the parts are basically ready to roll as is. So that's really good news. Well, here go the 
assembly is now fully painted and weathered and are going through their assembly process. I just want to take a moment to show some of these pieces off now that they're fully painted because once many of the pieces get permanently mounted, you're not going to be able to appreciate some of the paintwork that went into these. So I guess starting with here the radiator. Here you can see the cores now that they are fully weathered. Specifically on both sides. We have some weathering here with the dripping of the fluid as well as I did something similar on top. Now of course once the plugs go on this will complete the look but more info on that is of course to come. There's the second radiator. Here we have the housing itself. And here you can see now that the floor plate has been permanently fitted, how this section here sticks over it, which is, again, as per the real unit. On this model here, I went ahead and had the wires come out from the side. Now, once they are mounted to the tank, over here you're not going to be able to see due to the way the deck is, so it's a perfect location to have the wires emerge and hidden along the side of the sponson, which, of course, are needed because that's what spins the fans on this vehicle. You can see some of the interior detailing. And of course, this here will be visible through the engine compartment once mounted to the vehicle. And here are the fan units now completely assembled, painted, weathered, and are ready to go. Here you can see them up close. Here we have the rubber gasket now fully painted and weathered. And it really does a good job at completing the look. Note you can see the fan clutch gearbox on the inside. Here we have the radiator. And on the top portion here, we now have the other fittings that have been added to the radiator tops, including the connecting tube. On the side here, we have the fittings. These are the same 3D printed fittings that were showcased earlier, but now that they are fully painted, you get to see how they look. This is exactly how they are from the printing. No other details were added. Note they do have integrally printed on their hose clamps, as well as their top fasteners detailing. And on the opposite side, we have the cutoff version. And there's another one on the opposite side as well. The other system is again identical, which we've seen and I've alluded to several times, but is a mirror image, as you can see from the layout here, of the axis hatches. Just like with the remainder of the unit, even the bottoms on these sections here are fully detailed. Here you can see how the cooling tubes go from radiator to radiator. Note the one here in the center has this distinctive zigzag to it to make clearance for the descending section for the fan clutch. And we also have those clearances that I showcased before. Note that the sections here are held in place via these rubber tubes which are mirroring the look of the hose clamps which are found on the real units. And these are supplied with the sets. Now all that's required to finish these off are the additions of the ductwork which will be mounted to these two locations over here on each of the systems. Once I have the ducts in hand and fitted, the entire unit as one complete subassembly will then be dropped directly into the engine bay of the model. And here we have one of the clusters now temporarily fitted to the tank's engine compartment. Now note how the piece fits perfectly with the armor tech kit. If you'll notice, none of the details or appendages found on the top section here go past this little mounting bracket. That's absolutely important because if it does, it's gonna strike or make contact with the top rear deck sections as well as the fan grills which get mounted on these locations over here. Outside of the top clearances, you'll also see ample section space on the inside here for the ductwork, which again, like I mentioned before, is currently in the works and should be added hopefully soon enough after the upload of this video. 
Even at this point, however, you can see how the rear section of this model is really beginning to start filling out and fleshing in with all of its detailing. Currently, I'm wrapping up the remainder of the engine compartment detailing for this section over here, namely the two fluid tanks which are located in these two sections here of the center compartment. Of course, more information on this is to come in a future upcoming video update. In addition to the fan cooling system, I've also been working on the tank's exterior bodywork detailing. This would include the deletion of the fastener holes that are located on the side of the armor plates, as well as adding the weld beads to their appropriate locations. Let me bring the camera in closer, and then you can see exactly how much the models progress in this regard. Here we have the side armor plate. Note the fastener holes have been blended thoroughly and are nice and flush with the side armor. On the rear section here, you can also see how this has progressed. In the earlier videos, in the section over here, there was a big wad of epoxy. That wad has been sanded away, revealing just the section that we have here in the middle. The torch cut lines were sculpted into this section and the weld beads were then added. This completes this area here of the build. The same procedure was also done to the opposite side of the vehicle as well, along with the deletion of the other fastener mounting holes that I mentioned earlier. Back to the front of the model, here you can see the welds added to the front armor section. The welds were also added to the remainder of the puzzle type surfaces, which are found on these King Tigers here on the front and lower front armor hull plates. And this also includes the welds added to the bow machine gun ball. Currently the bodywork now is moving upward. You can see I'm plugging up the other fastener location holes that are found on the top deck. These are going to be sanded flush and smooth like the remainder of the bodywork and this should be done by the next video update. Along with the other welds which are present on the front armor plate as well as on the rear section over here which I haven't got a chance to add yet. And with that, that wraps up this project update video for this 1.6 scale radio controlled armor tech King Tiger heavy tank. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to this channel where it's a great way to keep up to date on new posted content, be it 1.6 scale project update videos like this guy over here or the other smaller scale model showcase videos that frequently get posted on this channel. Another way to keep in the loop of new posted content is by liking us on Facebook. There, I have more photographs of this particular build that have been posted since the project start, as well as the other models that have been posted on this channel in the past. Furthermore, don't forget to swing by EastCoastArmory.com for more 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detail components. Till next time.